Hi, welcome to Andrew Buckle's Book Haul. My recent books that I bought are from Amazon, eBay, as well as, of course, Gosh and other places. So this one, Mutants, Moon Knights and Assassin's Stone asked me to say his name. I can never get it right, but this is another brilliant artisan edition. This turned up yesterday. I'm really looking forward to go through it. It looks absolutely amazing. I loved lots of those stories when they came out. And the art, and you can see it's got some colouring as well. Really just stunningly beautiful. I love these artisan editions. Really, truly hope that IDW continue to bring them out. It's absolutely brilliant. This one's The Illustrated Journey. This is a Doctor Who book. I got it completely wrong. I did a review and I said it doesn't feature the Jody ones. Uh, it does. <laughs> Sometimes some of the stories of Peter Capaldi, Matt Smith, they all sort of blend. I thought, oh yeah, they don't include it, but it does. As well as Peter Cushing, I was told. <laughs> so it is still an amazing book though. Absolutely brilliant. I love it. Absolutely filled with some truly lovely pictures. Very unusual imagery at times. But every single episode of Doctor Who, I mean, if you're a Doctor Who fan, this has got to be a book for your shelves because it's just absolutely, just a great reference book as well. I mean, obviously you can get a, just a, standard sort of list of all what happens in the episodes but this i think is just great just for i mean look at that just beautiful the ice warriors i loved patrick trout beard that was my favorite beard that was a period well john pertwee as well as tom baker loved all those as well as of course the recent ones as well which are excellent i'm a mega fan of jg ballard and this is the stories inspired by jg ballard reports from the deep end now here's the list of all the various authors involved See there, of course, Will Self, as well as In Sinclair, as well as Christopher Fowler and Michael Moorcock and others. I love it. Absolutely lovely. I haven't read any of the stories yet. I've been flicking through it just quickly. There's quite a lot of less. You can see lots of different stories. Now, I would love to see a book, Vermilion Sands. Now, a complete one of like this, this style, this sort of size, Vermilion Sands. One of my favourite set of stories. Love it. Archie, his first 50 years. Now, this one's a hardback. I bought this, £15, in Gosh Comics. It was passed from the state sale. Now, I went to the initial state sale, went back a week later. This was still there. So I thought, yes, I will get this. I love Archie Comics. Now, of course, I probably looked at it during the estate sale. But you just, you can't pick everything up, of course. You're just looking through. And sometimes, of course, you miss things. So this one's full of some really great 1940s, 1950s stories. And you can see really quality reproduction. Eight sale and gosh comics I bought again a week later the life and works of the great American cartoonist and you've got Skippy and Percy Crosby now I have to say didn't know anything about his work so this is a lovely little book that I just picked up and thought you know what I love comic strips newspaper strips and this is a fascinating insight into an artist that I didn't know anything about as well as some really great fine examples of his work I'm currently reading this. This is Julia, 1984, Sandra Newman. Absolutely brilliant. Now, I love 1984. One of my favourite, favourite books that I love picking up all the time. It's just a great book. And this one is, a, as it says there, a magnificent retelling in 1984 that goes beyond Winston Smith's story to reveal what Oceana was like for a woman. And it is really, really good. I'm about halfway through now, so I haven't finished it yet. So it's, uh, But so far, really good. It's, I'm not going to say anything about the story, but definitely, definitely recommended. This was one of my pickups in Oxfam, my local Oxfam, a scrapbook of the 20s. I love these ones. Berlin, Paris, anything like 1920s, 1910, that sort of period, like Vienna and things. Just, and this has got full of lots and lots of great pictures, imagery, artwork, as well as obviously the films of the period. And well, like very, very cheap book but still a fascinating read, especially, of course, things like the architecture. As well as books, I love records. And these, I love. I love these CDs. And I'm all, I never buy the ultimate ones. Often there's like ultimate ones that are at, I think some are 250, whatever. Crazy prices. I generally stick for ones around about 12 or 13 pounds, like this sort of one. And this has got Who's Next and The Lifehouse. And it's, well... Ah, I enjoyed it. Now, the tracks, of course, very similar on the uh, sessions there, as well as singles and live. But still, found it quite a fascinating one. Though I must admit, this one's very hard to actually get the music out. <laughs> it's actually, you've got a little booklet as well. They generally always come with a booklet, but they are so difficult to sometimes, mm, read 
I love these sort of ones as well. Crime scene. This is spies, thighs, and private eyes. Lots and lots of tracks. Very hard to actually work out the various titles there, but there's a whole load of them. The Man with the Golden Gun, Arm. I was going to say Gun. That's Bond film. The Untouchables, Mission Impossible, and many others. I love modern music, and this one is just a superb collection of modern music. Now, not every single track on these ones or any of the others. I've got a brilliant sum of there's a few duds as well, but this is a very interesting one. Free Beat and Psych Years. And you can see the long list of various artists there. And again, you've got a lovely little booklet here. And you've got some information. Not a huge amount, but it's got some obviously examples of all the various covers, which are always fascinating. Probably ones that I probably never, ever will ever see. The Fruit Machine. Now, this is some really weird stuff. I absolutely love this sort of music. This is sort of exotica music. I don't know what you'd actually classify this. Very, very strange, oddball music, but I love it. Absolutely great. <laughs> Xylophone, all kinds of different instrumentation. Jazz, it's a really odd feel, but some really good tracks. Martin Denny and Arthur Lyman. I'm just looking through a few of the names there, but thoroughly enjoyable. I've got a few of those, and I have been thoroughly enjoying discovering them. I must admit, didn't know anything about genre, but I've enjoyed them. Now, another Who album. I love this one. The Who Sell Out. I got, of course, I did actually have the original as well, the original LP, but I got the CD, but I thought, oh, I must get this as well. Now, again, I think this has got one of these sort of, there's often these sort of deluxe editions, special extra editions, and there's different tracks and things. I don't know. I can't keep up with it. So, uh, well, this will do. This will do for me. Until they bring out the ultimate, ultimate deluxe edition, and then I'll probably go and buy that as well. I've never bought any of the Now records. Maybe I should have done. I don't know. But these ones I really love. These ones are year-themed. I love year-themed ones. 1966, 1973, 1976. I often buy those sort of ones. And this collection, really good. Must admit, I'm just looking at it just then. Why didn't they just keep a consistent now yearbook, 1979? And so obviously they put the extra. Maybe they should have put the extra at the end and so you could see it just a consistent all the way through. And also, well, the colours. I assume for the 1970s, they're all going to be sort of this sort of colour. I hope they're consistent with the colour scheme. Obviously subtle variations per year. But it's still great selection. And this one is the yearbook, 1979. And it's got a... Great selection of songs. Now, some obviously are very familiar, the Queen ones, the Police, but you've also got loads of ones, well, ones I'm not particularly familiar with. I'm just quickly looking down the list. I think I know of every single one of those now. But of course, oh no, Peaches and Herb, Reunited. Probably know it, but I must admit, doesn't immediately come to mind. But still, there are definitely some unusual ones, but they're obviously all songs that were big hits back then. Obviously, I watched Top of the Bops and all those sort of programmes, collected millions and millions of records at the time, but it doesn't mean I, of course, heard every single song. And there's also an extra, which is really nice as well, and I'm just quickly looking to see which... Ah, oh, here's the extra one. So you've got here the extra yearbook. I wonder if they bring out an extra, extra one. And then, of course, they change the game, the spine again. But I think they should do with 79. There should be at least three or four more albums. There must be lots of great... But there's all... Probably a little bit more obscure stuff here. Not excessively obscure, but still. I mean, you've got Marion Faithful, you've got the Commodores, uh, Three Degrees, My Simple Heart, I love that one. The Stranglers, Duchess, can't say. I... Okay, The Ruts, Babylon's been excellent. Jam, Strange Town. There's some songs that I'm not 100% familiar with. I mean, it's probably as soon as I put them on, me, oh yes, that's that song. But before that, oh, Duke of Earl, I love that one. I love all those sort of songs. Ian Dury, Reasons to Be Cheerful, Part. Three. I wonder what happened part two, part one, and all those stuff. Anyway, I'm certain people have always asked that question. And they've got 78 and 73. 73, I must admit, is a great year. Again, lots and lots of great tracks. And again, some songs that I'm fairly familiar with. Now, Steel Eye Span, not so familiar with, but I played a lot of their records over the years. Gilbert and Sullivan, and also 10CC. You know, the usual suspects, but still a great collection. Again, you get another one of these things. Now, these ones, I've got four. The main ones have got four CDs. These are collector's edition. I always love those collector's edition ones. And these ones have got three. But again, you've got some really unusual ones like Blue Mink, Randy, Mott the Hoople. Uh, you've got White Plains, Step Into a Dream, Dawn, I love that one. Say, Has Anybody Seen My Sweet Gypsy Rose? Those sort of songs. Not ones that I often hear on the radio. So, um, 
Again, great collection. Now, there, I think there is a deluxe edition where you get an actual booklet. I'm not certain about that. I haven't bought those. They're a bit more expensive, and I thought, really, do I need a booklet about 1973? Not particularly. Or 74, 78, etc. And there's the 78 ones. Now, I hope they continue this series because I really, really enjoy them. Hopefully, they also add some more. Maybe they go for the 60s. Obviously, they've done quite a few of the 80s, I think. But I haven't been buying those. I'm not a mega fan of the 80s movie. Some of it's good, some of it not. And this one's a slightly more unusual one. This is now 12 inches. I didn't buy many 12 inches. I don't know why I always bought the singles. 12 inches, I sort of like, just didn't buy them. So uh, this one is quite an interesting collection. So there's a lot of songs on here that I probably never heard. Unless they play them on the radio and I sort of thought, oh, that's an unusual version of that song. Are you ready for love? One that I'm actually singing currently in a choir. I love that song. Absolutely, I'm not going to burst in the song at this point. <laughs> Everyone will be very grateful for that. This one. There's another couple of ones, unusual ones. Again, this exotic, the exotic sounds. I'm not saying what it's exactly, but you've got this one, Hypnotic, and it's got a collection of, I think it's two albums. You've got the Enchanted Sea, both these are excellent, really, really odd sounds, great music. Love playing this. And it's also got some bonus tracks. I haven't got the original albums, so I don't know which ones are which. But it's uh, very nice. Uh, it's obviously got some details there. There's no booklet, unfortunately. Would have been really nice. Unfortunately, this slightly, for some weird reason, is slightly coming out. Oh, it's got some details, obviously, of the album then, Enchanted Sea, as well as Hypnotic. And here's another one, and similar sort of theme. This one is, again, Martin Denny. Again, absolutely brilliant. Afro Desire. And again, he's got two albums, Quiet Village. Oh, I wonder if it's the song Quiet Village, Lion Sleeps Tonight. We're doing that one as well in another choir. And there we've got another song, one album, Afro Desio. Now, don't ask me, I had to say, it's so odd, the Tetsy Fly. I mean, you listen to it, I, I thought, the sound just came out around the whole room. I thought, ooh, that guy was a bit weird. But still, I loved it. Absolutely love it. Really, really good quality. Excellent. Definitely, definitely recommend. Certainly if you're looking for some really unusual... Now, this is an unusual one as well. Mm, OK. Not as good as those ones, but certainly interesting. Space Age, Age Pop Volume 2. Mallets in Wonderland. But still, very odd sort of Space Age, weird... Just odd music. But I love odd music. Those sort of weird albums that you just think... Mm. I love books about various artists. Pauline Boaty. Now, I didn't really know much about her. I've seen a documentary or two about uh, that period, pop art. So this one's British pop art, Soul Sister. Lots of examples of her work all the way through, as well as, of course, many other artists as well at the Royal College of Art, as well as, again, the Royal College of Art. And many other pictures as well. And lots of information about various parties and various TV things and Films, apparently she was in a film called Alfie with Michael Caine. Or was she? I don't know. Anyway, it just mentions that later in the book. But still, very interesting little book. Pauline Boaty. I can see there some of her artwork at the back. This is a very odd one from Abraham's Comic Arts. I loved it though. Superheroes Journey. Now I've done a review already by Patrick McDonnell. It's a very weird combination of the Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, lots of different artists, as well as a childlike artwork you can see at the bottom. So the cover is slightly confusing. When you look at that, probably in the shop, you think, oh, I'm not certain I really like the look of that. But I think it's an absolute joy all the way through. You can see there, obviously, the Watcher and Reed, as well as, of course, let's find some actual Doctor Doom. And, of course, you've got the classic there, one with Iron Man and Spidey there. And then... <laughs> back down to some very unusual, like when he was about six or seven, that sort of style of artwork with the Avengers. This one's an unusual one, Justin Levy and the Anonymous Project. I really love photo books, and this one's got lots of great pics all the way through. Just very unusual, just people just cropped in very unusual ways, and a mix of, yes, and it's in French, just to confuse things, but still absolutely lovely. There's also a number of other books in this series of Anonymous Project, and some are quite expensive, but this one was relatively cheap, so I was uh, thought, yes, I will pick up that. 
This is a lovely book, Secessions, and this is Klimt, Struck and Lieberman, and many others as well, from Herma Books Publications. I'm not saying it's Herma Publishers, they call it. And you can see a list of loads and loads of different artists all in this book. Wow, what a stunning book this is. But Herma Books generally are always pretty amazing. You've got Eugend there. You've got, uh, let's see, I don't know who he is, Eugene Spiro, and, of course, photos but there's a lot of unusual stuff which is which are sort of the reason i buy these sort of books i just love the more sort of and of course got there some good old brilliant work and some more sketches and some posters as well as many lovely paintings this is an odd volume contemporary graphic artist i wasn't really sure when i was buying what i actually was going to get volume two now volume one and volume three also exist by Morris Horn, and there's some fine examples of comic book art, newspaper strips, etc., all the way through. But how it's done, this one obviously is Kurtzman, but you've also got many other artists, Don Martin, of course, there's Don Martin, as well as illustrations for Western novels, as well as a Nancy one there by Jerry Scott. Actually, that looks very unusual, Nancy, doesn't it? And good old Beetle Bailey. This is one I bought from uh, my local Oxfam shop, uh, The Outline of Adada and Serialism by Dawn Aidis. Now, an unusual collection of 60 colour illustrations, and, well, it's got an introduction, obviously, there, but then you've got some very odd paintings all the way through. I love these sort of catalogues. These sort of ones that, if you don't pick up, you'll never see again. So I thought, well, this one was from 1978, so I thought, yes, for 99 pence, perfectly reasonable little book, and I say it's a... Uh, well, quite a few catalogues like this. This is a very impressive book, The Definitive Guide to Asian Comics. And it's by Paul Gravett and Manga Asia. Asia. Manga Asia. <laughs> Whatever. But still, when I bought it, I thought I was buying a book, obviously, of uh, manga and anime and those sort of things. However, it's actually filled with lots more than that. And it's just full of tons and tons of examples of absolutely fascinating work. Lots of it, I have no idea that ever existed. I mean, look at that. Stunning stuff. There's lots of ink paintings as well. So this, this covers Bangladesh, Bhutan, Cambodia, China, Hong Kong, India, and so on. There's a lot and a lot of detail that I totally did not know about. So absolutely fascinating book. Really worth checking out. And I was very pleased to pick this up for £14.80 in the Whitechapel Art Gallery. I was going to uh, see a talk about something and I went in the bookshop and wow great little book great little find DVD fairly recently the armchair theatre it was just one I think it was about four DVDs but it's actually I've just got one of them and it's got a number of episodes they were all excellent obviously all black and white back in the 1960s that sort of period. and this book is all the lost years like got the Avengers got loads and loads of great Lots of things, I think, that are all completely gone or not particularly easy to find, other than, of course, a few photos. But still, lots and tons of information behind the scenes, all about the various scripts, how it was done, how it was created, various people that were going to be used, not used, and so on. Really, really brilliant book, a super impressive book, from uh, with chapters on the Avengers and out of this world, it said, and there's more examples of all the various stories. I think definitely worth picking up. I bought these when they came out, Love and Rockets. I absolutely loved it. I got issue one, two, three, four, all the way through. Unfortunately, I haven't got them now, but still, I thoroughly enjoyed them. Also, I bought over the years many collections, and I thought, well, I haven't got any collections now of Love and Rockets, so I thought, I'll go and get one. And this one, of course, is the earliest stories. Really great, still super impressive, absolutely amazing to read. And I think it's about like 15, 20 volumes. There's a lot of volumes associated with it. And, of course, there's the big, massive box set that would be pretty impressive all the 50 story 50 comics and you've got the 100 rooms and many many other tales all black and white all the way through but still some of the best comics ever produced really lovely little volume and i got this one reasonably priced and the others are still reasonably priced as well in most cases i assume so there maggie and hopi the early years early 1980s I'm a big fan of Archie comics. I've got lots and lots of Archie comics. Not perhaps for everyone, but I thoroughly enjoy them. And these ones, lovely hardback series. This is volume three, book three, as it says there, 400 pages. And it's got lots of the early stories, as well as, of course, some of the later stories. So all the way through. I think the reproduction is very nice. Nice quality book. Now, not every story classic, 
but many of them are really thoroughly enjoyable. Just some of those books that you can just pick up and go through and read two or three stories and then put it back down again. I don't think I've ever read an Archie comic all the way through. So it's one I just sort of... And then, of course, got more up-to-date ones. Here's book four. Now, I don't think there's any particular order in this way as to how they've done it. I, maybe there is. I, I haven't seen any logic to it. But you've got the 1940s. Obviously, you've got the other book. It's 1940s as well. So they've obviously selected some stories. And there's some good stories. And there's some pretty average stories. Also, there's some newspaper strips as well. Well, I saw that in one of them. But maybe this one hasn't got... I think that's probably book three. But still, the artwork is absolutely great. Stories are fun. And, well, what more can you expect from a comic? Just absolutely love it. And, of course, you've got all the details. That's the great thing about them. Quite often they mention the various issues they come from, and there's so many. <laughs> there's so many. I think they produce so many. Jughead and this and Archie and me, Archie Superhero, Archie Riverdale, Riverdale Agents or whatever. There's lots and lots. I don't know if there's a mass. There probably is a massive reference guide to all the Archie books. They must have. They must have produced millions of them. Seems like that anyway. But I love this. So this is book four. Maybe I might even pick up book one and two at some point. I don't know. This I've just reviewed. Absolutely love this. The story of Ernie Bushmiller, the man who created Nancy. This is one of probably the best graphic novels of a biography that I've ever ever picked up. Just amazing. I love it. Fritzy there. And Ritz. Fritzy Ritz. And you've also got Phil Fumble and many other examples. All the way through this, lots of examples of Bushman's art. And it's just by Bill Griffiths. This is a fun, thoroughly enjoyable read. All the way through it. I love the letters between Samuel Beckett and Bushmiller. And also got examples there. National cartoonists and many more. Absolutely great. Really worth picking up. So this is the latest graphic novel masterpiece from the creator of Zippy the Pinhead, Invisible Ink, and Nobody's Fool. And you've got the three rocks there. There's always piles of magazines in my local Oxfam. This one's Modern Painters. There's about 50 or 60 of them. I just picked up one, mainly because it was about film and video or photographs and video. I thought that sounds really interesting. So just great. Well, for a pound, perfectly reasonable. Now, this one was, I think it was 2001. It's quite a few years ago. Yes, 2001, so 22 odd years. But still, great little read, great little articles about a variety of people, like William Shakespeare and Ian Sinclair. Here's an unusual book I picked up at Oxfam, Read On. I assume that's how you say his name. However, maybe not. Michael Gibson, and this is from Tashan Books. I love these sort of very, very thin books, but they're still full with great, great imagery all the way through. Again, Say, an artist I didn't know anything particularly about. I've heard of his name, but just to see some of his work, really, really good. Another brilliant book from Oxfam Books. I love Oxfam Books. I'm always going in there. The art section is just full of all great things. You think, oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be great. You can only buy, of course, so many things. The catalogue of the exhibition, Seeing Salvation, and just full of just amazing imagery all the way through. Really, really impressive. Lots of things I just did not know. And... Love it. Absolutely love it. And for £1.99. You can't complain about that. Just a brilliant art book. I love these collections. The Anonymous Project. Yes, another one of the Anonymous Project. I've got a, a couple of books of Anonymous Project. And it's just brilliant. Just full of some absolutely stunning pictures all the way through. Really love those. Just those sort of things. I mean, times I've been to Seaside and just sort of just sit, you know, you think, wow. <laughs> or just a scene of just some guy. Digging all the way down to the centre of the earth. I assume that's what he was doing. I think I always tried to do that as well. But I just love these sort of books. This is from Hoxton. Hoxton Mini Press. And they're great. There's a collection of them. There's, I don't know, 10 or 15, mid-40s to the 70s. And full of possible stories and forgotten memories. Britain's past. This is a fascinating book. Charlotte Berend Corinth. I saw pictures of her uh, in Lovis Corinth. And I didn't know much about her. And I saw this book listed on Amazon. I thought, yes, I must find out a little bit more. And it's full of some really great imagery all the way through. Some really superb paintings and drawings. And also some very, very unusual ones as well. Superb artist. Really pleased picking this up. The weird thing about this book is you've got the German there and you've got the English there. Which I suppose is great if you're trying to obviously learn. <laughs> that was, but still... It is, obviously, I'm just going to concentrate on the English side. But still, I love this book. 
Really, really great little collection. And this is from Herma. Herma Press, one of my favourites. They bring out so many great books. The weird thing about this book, why did they bring it out in much bigger format? You know, it's very unusual that they've gone for the smaller size, but still, really, really good. Yet to read this, but I saw this listed in the Gosh listings on Facebook, and I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. So about of inter-system jump navigation, possible blah, blah, blah. Science fiction one, of course. And it looks great. The artwork looks absolutely superb. Very unusual. I, Yeah. I am looking forward to reading this. I haven't started yet, but I will be reading it very shortly. So there's details on the back there. The hard switch is coming. Great science fiction and great comic. Probably my favourite author, J.G. Ballard. I love his works. I've read loads of them. Obviously, Crash, Terminal Beach, Vermilion Sands, and so on. Over the years, picked up most of them. Don't think I've read every single book, but I must admit, I love his non-fiction. I've got a few non-fiction books, and I must do a quick review of this one with those as well. But this one is selected non-fiction, 1962 to 2007. I always wish it was complete. Maybe it's just not possible. I don't know. But I would love to see a complete one. Maybe they'll bring out more selected fiction or more, even more selected, etc. But this is full of some great, great, wonderful essays and articles and everything. whole range of stuff you can see here. It's just a long list of reviews, features and essays, lists, captions and glossaries. Actually, I'm surprised they've never brought... Oh, no, that... I think apparently got lots and lots of ideas from various telephone directories and things. I wonder why they've never... Brought, that would be a bit obsessive, wouldn't it, to get all that sort of thing. But memoir and tributes, capsule commentaries, forum discussions and much, much more. Wow. If you're a JG Bar fan... This is a must-have, and I say I've got that other book, the Deep End book, so I've got a lot of J.G. Ballard to be reading over the next few months. This is just an odd... The Detective Chimp Casebook. Actually, one thing that could they could bring out, they could bring out Rex the Wonder Dog. I wonder if they're going to bring a collection of Rex the Wonder Dog. I really hope the DC bring out more of these sort of collections. This is 1950s. I honestly never thought in a million years that they would bring out the Detective Chimp Casebook. Is there a TV series or something coming out? Or something, a film? Just seems an odd choice to bring out. But I'm really pleased I have. The stories are great. The artwork is superb. Just brilliant. You've got the chimp there from the files of Edward Chase. And uh, let's just quickly go through it. It is a very nice quality book. A lot of stories, because they were very short. They were not long stories. I mean, you, you can see there. 27, 33, 39, 45. So you can see very quick. And so, but just superb artwork. Erwin Hassan, Carmen Infantino, and many, many others. And there's also a great bit of Gil Kane at the back, a, a later story. But really, very nice reproduction as well, really sharp. Other than a few cases, there's just a few pages where it slightly gets a bit odd, but maybe they just didn't have the artwork or whatever to actually source it properly. But I just think it's just absolutely great. Beautiful, beautiful and fun stories. And that's the key thing. They are just completely daft. <laughs> But it's, I mean, you've got here all the various things. And of course, he's always saying, no one else can understand. <laughs> he obviously, you have the thought balloons there and uh, what he's doing, but it, it is good. The only thing they don't, there's no covers, which is a pity. I would have loved if they'd included the covers as well. Obviously, it probably didn't feature him on the cover, but it would have been nice to have seen those Rex stories because they're all from generally the Rex ones. You can see Rex to Wonder Dogs 37, 38, 39, etc. 40. All the way through to 46. And then it was DC Comic Presents 35. But that would have been a nice addition. Now they do have a few extra bits at the back. And let's just go right to the back. I say it's got some brilliant Gil Kane. Anything Gil Kane. I would love to see a collection, a massive collection of DC Gil Kane. So it's Marvel Gil Kane. All these covers and things. But the eight files, this is it, chimp cover gallery. Again, they could have gone for maybe small, just, you know, maybe 40 on a page or something, just all of them, all the covers, so you could see examples of the Rex stories. Now, DC Special, oh, that one, Infantino one. And you've got this one here, of course, he occasionally appeared in these sort of 100-page giants. I loved 100-page giants. And they were, and I always enjoyed those quirky little stories. Not so many times, the actual Tarzan stories. I actually enjoyed these ones. And actually, I wonder if they bring out that one. Congo Bill as well. <laughs> That'd be interesting, wouldn't they, if they bring out that one. And Korak. I don't know if there's a collection of his. Who knows? And also Tarzan there. Tarzan's movie mate. Another one there, obviously. But again, this one was slightly confusing. 
I wasn't really sure why they included. Maybe there's a reason. I don't know. Maybe it was, it was mentioned somewhere, but I couldn't see the reason in the days of the mob, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But no, and I can't see him on the cover or anything. Oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> see, God, that is really. You really have. To, that is weird, isn't it? I, you know, I, I looked at that earlier and I didn't see him at all. And you got obviously the golden age flash there as well, but. That was very, that was a good spot for someone that spotted that there was a, and also this, of course, obviously what the covers there, but I love this. This is just an absolutely reasonably inexpensive collection and just real nice quality, quality book. Definitely worth picking up. If you're a fan of 1950s DC comics, please DC, bring out more of these collections. Why not? I know sometimes there's licensing issues. I mean, the adventures of Bob, whatever it was, Bob Hope and things. I suspect we will never see those, but there's thousands of old DC ones that surely they could bring out crime ones and all those sort of things. Like, it'd be great to see in this sort of collection. The Art of Nothing, 25 Years of Mutt. Now I bought it, Mutt, I should say. I bought this because of the earlier Marvel one that he did. And I thought, well, I must admit, I don't really know much about him, his artwork. Well, this is an absolutely lovely book all the way through. Lots of fine examples of his work. Now, it's not always the easiest one to demonstrate, but you can see there, very nice quality. Some colour ones as well. I oh, love that one. <laughs> the hopper one there. Mutts and sometimes looking, obviously, very much like a Robert Crumb there. Obviously, that's what it was. Sort of the underground, yeah, Robert Crumb, Zap Comics. But it's just full of, of a love of comics and those sort of newspaper strips and everything else. And it's just beautiful. Really, really great book. Really impressive. Anyway, 25 Years of Mutts, The Art of Patrick McDonnell. I got this fairly recently. I love Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. The artwork is superb. Now, I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> Omnibuses always seem to take me forever. I've got piles of omnibuses that I'm sort of halfway through. I pick it up read about another two or three stories, then put it down for a while. So eventually I will get through the whole lot. But wow, this is about stories of super-powered espionage tales, DC Black Label. Very impressive book and superb artwork. And, well, an actual joy to read, as you can see there. Now again, I haven't read it all, so I have no idea how it all ends, but it's so far been thoroughly enjoyable. Really pleased I picked this one up. Didn't really know much about it. It was one of those ones that it was quite a long time ago and I bought lots and lots of Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. And, well, I don't know, it's for some weird reason, that series, I just didn't seem to pick up. So, but this one, I'm really pleased that I picked up. And so this is a lovely little omnibus collection. I will review it once I've actually finished the book. As well as reviewing or discussing books, here's a lovely video. This is a series that I didn't know much about. Yellowstone origin story. I haven't got Paramount Plus or whatever it's called, but I thought, wow, because it's got Faith Hill and Tim McGraw. And I thought, I must get that. I love this scene. I love everything about that. She's been, Faith Hill is one of my favourites all time. I just love all the songs. And so it's just great to see this. And it's, I think it's about 10 episodes in this. I'm on episode four at the moment. So I'm slowly going through it. I, I always set, I think I must watch a bit more of that. And I do, I just get through a bit more. It's just, and there's also a lot of extras as well, which is really good, but it's really very enjoyable. Great cast. The other members of the cast are excellent. Isabel May, Sam Elliott, it's just brilliant. And others as well. Great, great DVD. This is an unusual one. The Penguin Book of Naughty. Postcards. Naughty. The way it's done. <laughs> now I say I have to go. Postcards. Yes. And it's, of course, full of the usual sort of things. That, but lots of old postcards. And quite fascinating. Now, obviously, many of these you can probably still pick up reasonably easily. I don't know. Various postcard marts. I often go to those and I look around and see all the various people seeing all these things. And, wow. But I must say, I've never been a collector of postcards. But still, why not? I think there's some great illustrations. Great period... And some of them are just suddenly thinking, can I show that? Of course I can. There it is. Perkins, Phil, is, what? Sometimes you work out what, what the joke was, but still, I'm certain there was a joke there somewhere. But still, this one I bought, actually, it said 79 pence. Weirdly, it was in a bin that was slightly oddly priced, so I picked it up and I thought it was slightly different from that. But still... I'm very happy picking up any of these sort of postcard books. I've got a few books of postcard ones, and this is a very enjoyable one. This is an odd book. 
and this is one of the books that you think, God, there's so many more one, you know, stories and artwork that it could include. I mean, over the years, there's been so many ads. You think, oh, that looks brilliant artist. Who did that work? Who did that one? And, well, this one, Comic Ad Men. It's like Mad Men, of course. Stephen Brower. And it features a lot of brilliant artists. You can see the list there. Mort Meskin, I love his work. Neil Adams, of course. Noel Sickles and Stan Drake and Basil Ro and so on. You can see the full list there. It's a nice sized book, but again, it's one of those books you think, God, they could bring out a massive thick tome and probably still wouldn't go through all the artists that produce brilliant works. Tootsie Rolls, never had a Tootsie Roll. I think I mentioned that in a previous video. It's one of those ones I think, Tootsie Rolls. And that. Many of them, of course, are in you quite often when you go like through 50s comics and 50, or the magazines or various magazines from the 40s, 50s, etc. You see them, you think, I wonder what the, who the art was, you know, who did that. But some great artwork all the way through this. And it mentions, obviously, Dick Brown there. So you've got here the Peter, Peter something, Paul Playhouse. I don't know what that is. Almond Joy and Mounds. You get dark, bittersweet chocolate. I have no idea. I'm certain it's very nice. But I have no idea. The folks next door. And again, this one's Bill Williams. Again, a lovely bit of artwork there. And then, oh, that looks great. Marvin Stein there. Many of them, I assume, did lots of artwork for like DC Comics, Marvel Comics, all those sort of publishers. But I'm, I'm not certain. But uh, Lou Fine, of course, one of the great artists, comic book artists. Got his, some illustration work there. It looks absolutely good. And that's the thing about seeing this. You actually see it, his drawing, as well as inking and everything. And he's just, wow, just brilliant. Abs you think, wouldn't that have been lovely if they had done the comic books like this? Really, this sort of level of quality, because the, the artwork is superb. Every panel in a comic book, but it would take so long, I imagine. Who knows? But here, the, the face in the creeping tide, and so on. Lots and lots of great stuff. This book is really worth picking up. I was saw it a while back, and I wasn't really sure what it was about, actually, and it was one of the ones in the shop, and it was all sealed up, so I couldn't actually look at it. But I'm really pleased I did pick it up, and it's uh, it's an interesting book. And again, one of those books, you think, why don't they bring out a massive tome of every single possible one that you could ever imagine? Because there's these sort of things, like the Spider-Man ones. Just wow. You know, I, I remember seeing those all the time. Hostess, fruit pies. I don't think I've ever had one. No idea what they taste like. Certainly they're lovely. And I saw one of the Cartoon KB, uh, I think, <laughs> always, I should never watch those because the worst thing about watching them is that I always end up going and look for something and the Will Eisner's Courtly. Now, this is number four. This one's number two. And number six. Most, unfortunately, do not seem to be available. There's eight in total. Eight of them, but many of them seem to be in the US. So you can see them, but they've always got like 56 pounds for the postage or something. And you think, I'm not going to buy for 56 pounds for postage. Maybe they could bring out a collection of them. That would be brilliant. Now a complete sort of all eight in one single book. That would be great. But let's go through one of them quickly. This one, as good as any. I love Will Eisner's work. And this one, Life Force. Just absolutely brilliant. I assume it is Life Force. Of course it's Life Force. Doesn't always say. It's, yeah, it's got the here story thus far. It's slightly done odd the way I've done it. The layout's very odd. Not immediately obvious that it's part of a series of life, unless you, of course, were regularly buying it. But if you just came to buy it in the shop, you wouldn't know exactly what that was going to be. But still, you got Mr. Mystic. Mr. Mystic. Not Dr. Mystic, but Mr. Mystic. That was a bit of a, an unusual one. Comics and comic there as well. And that one, no idea. I assume, oh, Fantasy Games, I assume that's a shop. You've got Robert Crumb's A Short History of America poster. I love that poster. You just see the changes in the way the world is changing. And Busy Arnold. And I think the other ones have got like Lou Fine. So you've got a Lou Fine one, the Shop Talk. There is actually a book, Shop Talk, available. Unfortunately, I don't think readily available in the UK. That's one of the reasons why I thought, you know what, I can pick up some of these. And it's a really fascinating little article talking, obviously, about Lou Fine. And it's just great. And the other one's similar. As well as, of course, some Spirit, as well as Will Eisner. And also some storytelling in comics. I love that Kurtzman signed print. Will Elder original art. And of course, a classic spirit. Always brilliant. I love those spirit comics. And the letters pages, which is always useful as well. And got the other section at the back there, you've got Will Eisner's quarterly number five, Steve Canyon number six, Megaton Man and Spirit number eight, as well as other books available, Art of Will Eisner, etc. And obviously Megaton 
man there on the back. So this is Will Eisner, and that is it. Run through of all the various comic books, DVDs, CDs that I bought over the last month-ish, three or four weeks anyway. Anyway, I hope you found this of interest. If you've got any questions about any of the books, would you like some of them to be reviewed? Please put in the comments below. Have you picked any of them up? Are there any books you've picked up this month that you think, wow, why haven't you picked this one up yet? Why haven't you reviewed it? I might have already got, got the book, of course. Maybe have. But also, there's always books coming out I don't know any about. And I suddenly think, oh, you know, I find it about three or four months' time. And normally it's out of print. So if you've got anything you think, yes, that is the best, 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 best book ever. Really must sort of recommend it. Please put it in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. Anyway, bye.